The Division of Fire Safety presents Electrical Fire Safety with South Burlington Fire Department. This month, I have with me Lieutenant Brad Dottilio of the South Burlington Fire Department. We're practicing good social distancing and doing this uh, month's video remote. And we're gonna talk about electrical safety, as we had said, and how you can do best practices in your home to make sure you're safe. So one of the most common things we see are daisy chaining power strips or the use or overuse of extension cords. Lieutenant, could you speak to how this uh, compounds your danger for electrical fires? Absolutely, Patrick. You know, for consumers, we make it easy for them to daisy chain power strips and extension cords are very easily accessible to consumers today. Oftentimes, these products are relatively inexpensive and unfortunately, consumers think that they can plug in more appliances, more devices uh, than they're intended for. And we know today in in the world we live in in 2020, that most of us have a large number of electronic devices in our homes, and all of these devices require some, some power source. Consumers think that those devices are intended to be, you know, plugged together and a convenience for them to plug in eight or 10 or more devices that essentially go back to one outlet. And what we have to remember is that that outlet was designed to carry a certain amount of electrical current. And if we overload that, that over time can cause a problem and certainly lead to fires. Right. And it makes it easier for them when they really should be, if they need that extra power, contacting a licensed trade electrician to properly install into the electrical system of their house those additional power outlets so that you can charge all the devices of this century when your house may have been built in the last century or for some of us even further back. Do you see a lot of people modifying appliance plugs or extension cord plugs, ripping out that ground that they may not have in their house. They may only have a two prong outlet, but all their plugs are three prongs. Um, what's the potentially dangerous thing that they're, they're doing and then putting themselves at risk there, Lieutenant? Well, again, Patrick, the focus here is on the electrical current and, you know, the amount of voltage that goes through there. We know that you can switch out a two prong outlet with a three prong outlet, something you can buy very inexpensively at a local hardware store. And that doesn't mean that your outlet is now grounded. The best way to find that out is to either have a home inspection or have a qualified certified electrician come to your home and test your outlets for you. So we, we try to look at the age of the homes in different areas of our community and gauge their level of risk. And we know that people that live in older homes have most of their outlets that are not grounded. So in today's world of electronic devices and appliances, we know they carry uh, a much greater uh, electrical load than than they used to and, and that creates a problem if if they're not plugging the appropriate appliances into outlets that are grounded or having their the electrical wiring in their home upgraded another thing a lot of people use are extension cords we try to limit the use of extension cords extension cords really shouldn't be used in your home as a primary means of power if you're running your appliances daily off an extension cord you're running your, the risk of either overloading that cord and potentially having a fire, or that cord isn't designed to be in that one position for so long, and it may wear and open up and create the potential for a shock or a, a short on the system, and potentially even an electrocution in, in, the, uh, in the worst case scenarios. Is that something you guys see, and, and how uh, is best that uh, people can prevent that, Lieutenant? Yeah, absolutely. We see it all the time. We especially see it during our liquor license inspections, which we generally do between the months of January and, and April, sometimes into May, 
where we, we go into all supermarkets, all restaurants, convenience stores. Uh, and, you know, again, as you mentioned, extension cords are convenience for people. They allow, you know, they give us greater distance to reach outlets. Extension cords are not designed for permanent wiring. So we tell people it should only be used as, as a temporary uh, electrical supply and use it for that particular day, but not leave it permanently plugged in. And what happens is the, the insulation over time frays or becomes damaged and exposes the internal wires. I've seen it on numerous occasions where people that have cats or dogs in their homes, they, they're they unsupervised and we know that animals when they're unsupervised sometimes can, can get bored and, and they chew in to these cords and the homeowners don't realize it because they haven't inspected the cords and now you know you're at risk of an electric electrocution like you mentioned uh, or having a fire because they're n they're not designed to carry that electrical load permanently 12 months out of the year so inspecting these cords is something that can be done very easily very quickly and in this case if I found something like this where I had damaged insulation, even though the wiring insulation looks intact to me, I would take it out of service and not use it again. The risk of having a fire is too great in this case, and the cost for replacement is minimal. And we always say one fire is one fire too many. It isn't worth the risk. That's a, that's a great saying and a, and a great uh, kind of motto to live by. We see a decent amount of electrical fire fatalities through the months of November through March. Lieutenant, could you speak to how and why this may be? Sure. Just to review, Patrick, as you're aware, we see approximately 45,000 electrical fires yearly in the United States. And, and we know that the primary cause is, is some type of electrical malfunction uh, of lighting equipment or the the wiring in the home. When you look at the fall, the fall months in, in New England and in other parts of the country that experience different seasonal changes, uh, one thing that, that is evident here is we transition into colder months where we have to heat our homes. In addition, uh, we have holidays that, that people like to celebrate our heating system whether it's natural gas propane heating oil but some people supplement that that heating source with space heaters and i've even seen electric ranges used in situations where homeowners can't afford to pay their heating bills especially during those uh those months when you're adding the load to your house make sure that you're practicing good electrical safety Thanks a, a bunch, uh, Lieutenant, for joining us here. We will definitely see you in future videos as South Burlington did a great job on participating in the fire safety calendar. So again, thank you very much uh, to you and the, your family and the guys. Hope everyone is safe during this uh, pandemic and, and thanks for what you guys do over there in South Burlington. Well, it's our pleasure, Patrick. Thank you for including me and we look forward to participating in more videos. Hi and welcome into the Vermont Division of Fire Safety's Fire Safety Trailer. We're going to be talking about electrical safety and how you can keep your family safe in the home, in the kitchen, and in the bedroom. Let's talk about some stuff we can do in the kitchen to keep ourselves electrically safe. Come on over here. Other things you can do to be electrically safe in your kitchen or bathroom is to make sure that your electrical appliances don't run through the water source. So making sure wires aren't in your sink and keeping them out of reach of children will also help you stay safe. Another thing you can do is not use extension cords. Using extension cords can cause electrical fires by if they get wrapped up and create heat. One of the big issues we see with extension cords are frays and rips. As you can see in this extension cord has a rip. We may not notice these rips right away and it may be too late and an electrical fire may start. Now that we've talked about the electrical hazards you may see present in the kitchen or bathroom, let's go talk about the electrical hazards you may see in a bedroom. In the bedroom, there are some electrical hazards that we see more often. Come over here and I'll show you what I mean. 
Vermont, we do see a lot of cold, wintry nights. And a lot of people will use electric heaters as a means of supplementary heat. The danger with supplementary heat is that anything resting against these can catch fire. Luckily for us, we caught this in time. So how do you prevent a fire from an electric heater? Give that electric heater some space. A three foot radius around it is best practice. Some other hazards we may see in a bedroom, or for that matter, anywhere else in the house that extension cords are used. Extension cords running under carpets. When an extension cord runs underneath a carpet, the carpet may rub on that extension cord, opening that helmet. Like we had shown in the video before, those elements are now open to whatever may touch them. Contact to open elements may create a fire. On our last note on extension cords, extension cords should really only be used for 90 days. They're a temporary means of power. If you need power in a specific location for more than that 90 days, you should hire an electrician to wire in more outlets so that that power is now coming directly from your electrical system in the house. And finally, if you're interested in using the Division of Fire Safety's fire safety trailers at your next public safety event, give us a call. I'll leave the information in the description below on how you can do that.